Okay, if not, uh, the, we can move to the uh, uh, today's uh, the, 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 uh, topic, which is the RN transducer. Uh, that is the, uh, I would say, the last uh, uh, the, uh, architecture that we will explain uh, in addition to the HMM, CTC, and the attention based encoder decoder. Okay, so um, the RN transducer is uh, the one of the end-to-end uh, -end, uh, method. So the uh, architecture is like this. Basically, uh, similar to the CTC or attention-based encoder decoder, we try to directly uh, the optimize P or given W. However, this is uh, the different from the, uh, the, the CTC or attention. And I will try to remark this kind of difference in this lecture. Okay, so I will review the RN transducer, which was already in introduced in the beginning, but in this case, is, uh, in that uh, the timing, I only kind of explained about the uh, very high level. So this time, I will try to explain the details about the, the RN transducer. So first, uh, the similar to the all our uh, formulation, we always starting from P, Z given O, which is a kind of a all possible summation of the alignment uh, that becomes P W given O, right? And please uh, the, always remember that uh, O and the W are different lengths. And the O would be the length of uh, the large T, capital T. And the uh, W token sequence uh, length is uh, J. And in the uh, RN transducer, uh, we using the, the hard alignment variable Z. However, uh, this is uh, the very different uh, uh, from the, uh, the CTC or HMM and so on. So uh, the especially length, uh, which part is different from the RN transducer versus CTC in terms of the length of Z? Yes, T plus J, right? CTC cases, it was T. But now uh, the T plus J uh, is a kind of a, uh, the, the uh, alignment variable that we have to solve. So this part becomes uh, plus J. By the way, similar to the CTC, we also introduced the blank symbol, or some other people call differently. But in this lecture, we call this additional uh, the symbol uh, that is also uh, the, the blank. Uh, similar to the uh, name in the CDC. Okay, let's uh, then uh, the formalize, uh, formulate uh, this uh, the, the, uh, equations. So from uh, the here to here, uh, what kind of uh, uh, the uh, rule uh, did we use from here to here? Product rule or chain rule, right? And then, Actually, uh, this itself may be uh, the good to tackle, but instead of using this uh, the alignment, uh, the, the history as a condition, we usually using the, uh, the partial token corresponding from one to K uh, minus one. So, and then instead of using the alignment, uh, we actually uh, the change the condition to the partial token. So this is a kind of a, a the basic uh, the equation of the RN transducer. And the, uh, the, let's uh, the, the also the explain about some of the definition of the uh, function. F inverse is uh, converting the, uh, the token sequence to the all possible uh, the, the alignment, okay? And the uh, one, uh, the F is actually uh, the inverse uh, F inverse is the, the function to uh, convert from the uh, the word to the all possible Z, and F is the opposite function, which is to uh, the, the, uh, represent the partial token sequence uh, up to K minus one. And this one is a little bit important, uh, so please also uh, the remember uh, this function and so on. And then uh, similar to CTC or HMM, we have this summation over the sequence. So this part is the exponential, but fortunately we can actually using the other 
uh, forward backward uh, algorithm to efficiently solve this one. Okay, so this is the RN transducer, and I will explain a bit more detail about each kind of other, the other uh, characteristics we saturate this uh, representation, which you guys have our paper now, right? So the, please check the, uh, the paper and then the, the, try to kind of understand it. So we usually using the, uh, this uh, the, the square uh, lattice. Uh, the information, trace information, uh, instead of the CTC. And this actually has a, a, the one a big difference, which is that we have this kind of arrow. This arrow is actually doesn't change the time. And then we actually, uh, the, the output, the uh, token, uh, the, without uh, the, the consuming the time frame, so please add a look at this kind of a passage. Okay, start, can start to use this one. Pen. So this direction, basically we don't consume the, uh, the, uh, any of the token. And also note that the, the it, this other formulation static from the start of sentence. By the way, this the graph representation is actually a lot of ways to express, explain about it. Maybe, for example, starting the time from zero, or we can also using the, uh, the transition-based uh, representation uh, rather than uh, the using this kind of a node-based representation. But uh, in this uh, the, the representation, I just following the uh, notation uh, of the original paper. We may find some better notation but I just stick to the original paper and so on. So some cases, for example, why this one is starting from t equal one and why this one is, you know, at the start of sentence equal means that j equal actually zero. Uh, this one is g equal zero, j equal one, j equal two, j equal three. And this is not symmetric, right? Uh, this one in the y axis starting from zero, while x axis starting from one. But again, this is a kind of a, a, a convention of the notation uh, the, based on the original paper. And the, our kind of uh, the problem is to uh, the find the, uh, the all possible paths uh, from the uh, left uh, the corner to the right corner, and including the, uh, this uh, final state and so on. And as I said before, uh, the this uh, the, the uh, vertical axis is very unique, which doesn't consume the input frame. And the uh, light side, uh, this is actually uh, doesn't change the state. Uh, remaining in the start symbol, for example, if we just kind of consuming the uh, the the uh, time frame. Uh, this means that, that we just remaining to the, uh, the start of the sentence uh, doesn't output anything at all at this stage. However, to kind of reaching to this goal, we actually can have uh, this kind of a route. And then we can actually uh, the, uh, the, uh, produce the, the SEE uh, the based on this kind of uh, the, uh, route. And uh, I believe uh, that we cannot make this kind of a transition in the, the CTC or HMM cases because then we cannot uh, reach to this other uh, end. CTC uh, and the HMM, always we try to consume one other uh, the, the, the timestamp to move to the, uh, uh, the uh, next other uh, token. But RN trans that this is allowed. So due to that, Actually, this other uh, tool is very, very flexible uh, compared uh, with the, uh, the CTC or HM based approaches. And then uh, that we consider uh, all possible token uh, that uh, sequence, and then uh, that we do some kind of inference or training and so on. That part is similar to the uh, CN, uh, CTC. Okay, so now I will uh, want to kind of spend a little bit of time to understand the conversion of the alignment and the token. 
So first, uh, as you may know, the uh, from the given uh, alignment uh, to token sequence, this is actually many to one mapping. And how to add a convert from Z to W, this is actually quite simple. We just removing the, uh, the blank symbol and uh, the first other the, uh, the, the uh, symbol. And then uh, we can actually uh, recover the uh, uh, token sequence uh, from the array alignment uh, sequence. Uh, so let's uh, the consider uh, these cases. So this one is actually, maybe you guys can also write to uh, do it by, by yourself. Uh, starting from the S to uh, initial symbol to the S. And then next we will uh, actually uh, the, the, uh, the going to uh, the consume the frame based on the blank symbol twice. Then we will move to the uh, next state E. And then we again uh, the, the using the uh, blank symbol to uh, go to the right uh, twice. And then finally we move to the, uh, the uh, output E and then at the finish uh, to the goal. So this is actually quite the trivial uh, the passes, one of the trivial passes to uh, the represent SEE, right? And then from the this part to this part, uh, the conversion is actually quite simple. We just removing the this one, this one, this one, this one, and this one, and then we can actually recover the other sequence SEE. Actually, the rule is uh, more simple than CTC, right? CTC cases. We actually have to uh, take care about the consecutive sequences, but in these cases, this is very kind of uh, the obvious that we actually don't have to care about the consecutive sequence, and then we can actually uh, get the uh, this kind of uh, the, the the symbol uh, without using the some kind of uh, complicated uh, the, the rules in CTC. So uh, we can also do the same. Uh, the, the, Same cases, this is a little bit more uh, the difficult uh, and this is a little bit important part. Uh, this is a partial alignment. Uh, let's say we are now uh, in the S to S blank blank E. When we are uh, the here, in this case, the um, we uh, can know the, uh, the partial history uh, the, at here. And this partial history actually becomes S and E. We just remove it. Okay, so next uh, is that, this is also a kind of obvious, but I just want to uh, explain about this. By the way, this is five. Okay. So, Let's uh, think about we have some passes, right? And then uh, we have some kind of uh, the point here. Let's say this one is D5. And as you see, uh, this is actually uh, the information about the uh, when this Z D5 happens. And then uh, the which uh, the symbol uh, Z5 uh, happens. Right. So actually, given if we have a kind of passes, all point, uh, we can actually get the corresponding time frame and the corresponding the, uh, the output token. So this is also uh, the important uh, uh, the, the, uh, the function to understand the RN transducer. So basically, RN transducer is try to provide a probability for each of this point. This is very important. 
So、uh, let's think about、uh, this kind of uh, the, the, uh, problem and how to realize uh, this, uh, the, the, uh, uh, this other probability. But again, uh, the, each of the, let's uh, the focus on the, each of the points、uh, and then we can think about、uh, the, the compute some value.、Uh, that is our goal. However,、uh, this is actually uh, the quite uh, uh, the complicated、uh, two dimensional uh, the, uh, values, right? So we could、uh, the fully kind of、uh, model this kind of two dimensional values, but instead we try to actually use a very simple way to、uh, the, uh, the provide a score for each、uh, the T and each、uh, token and so on. How to do that? First, We just using the encoder, which is kind of our,、uh, the, the getting the information of the uh, the uh, of the token, uh, sorry, of the time, time frame, right?、Uh, encoder is just sweeping the, all the kind of speech features and then providing the representation、uh, for each time frame, which we are the studied in the acoustic model. in Uh, the speech recognition, CTC, or even attention based encoder, decoder, right? And it can be BLSM or transformer. But in this case, of course, we don't care about the token. We just try to get some kind of features depending on the time frame. Now we can do that by using the encoder, right? And we do the same things、uh, for the,、uh, the, the, uh, the particle axis. Regardless of the acoustic input, let's try to uh, prepare, uh, prepare the, some token prediction、uh, the, pro, uh, the, the functions. How to model that? We can just use the language model, decoder network, right? So、uh, in these cases, we actually try to,、uh, the, for example,、uh, get the, the sum of the token at a hidden state based on the previously. Estimated hidden state and previously、uh, the obtained、uh, the, the sequence and so on. So, by using it, we could actually replace、uh, this kind of a condition as a information about a token. So, note that again, this one to k minus one means the sum of the subsequence、uh, the, in the point, right? And then we ignore the timestamp, and then we can compute the,、uh, the uh, dependency across the,、uh, the token and the dependency across the frame. And then how to make a, a sum of the score、uh, that depends on both the time frame and the token position? We can just combine them. We can just、uh, use i n g these two features as a,、uh, the, as a condition and then、uh, predicting the next uh, the, the, uh, the token,、uh, which can include a, 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 a blank and so on. Actually, this function here is approximated to write、uh, this kind of the form. We could, by the way, again use the, any other functions, more complicated functions, and so on. This is actually one of the approximation. Just one side of the、uh, the information, which is depending on the token, we just using the,、uh, the uh, language model. And one side of the information, which depending on the、uh, time frame, we just using the encoder. And then, given this kind of、uh, two other、uh, information, We can actually compute a score. That is actually the,、uh, the, what、uh, the, the RN transducer is trying to model. And here,、uh, the, since uh, we want to make it the probability, first we want to convert it the score, and then we're using the softmax. This technique is also that, that quite often h a p p e n in the attention part, right? And we're just using this kind of uh, uh, the, uh, the techniques. To get the,、uh, this information, to get the score, which、uh, corresponding to the,、uh, the entire uh, the partial uh, the, uh, the, uh, the history of this kind of probability.
So this is the other the other uh, the major uh, part of the uh, computation of the RN transducer. By the way, how to combine this one and how to get the score, I will explain it in the next slide. But anyway, this is actually quite other uh, the, the efficient. We actually avoiding to three sweeping this uh, two dimensional other uh, information with uh, just uh, the other uh, uh, two times of the one dimensional other uh, sweeping. Uh, and also for the other, uh, this part, we can just using the encoder network, which we already have a lot of uh, the, the studies there, right? And the same for this part, we just reusing the, uh, the uh, language modeling part. I wrote here RNN, but it, of course it can be transformer and so on. Okay, uh, this is a kind of a, uh, the major uh, part of how to make a condition uh, of the RN transducer. And then the last question is uh, the how to uh, the get to the score uh, and so on. And the score can be, uh, by the way, uh, the, again, anything. Uh, it can be actually the inner product, which we actually uh, the, the had a, a lot of uh, the experience in the self-attention uh, or transformer, right? But historically, uh, in RN transducer, we using a little bit complicated uh, the, this kind of form uh, of the, uh, the, the uh, combination. This is because uh, this uh, the scoring part, uh, after the, this uh, the, the scoring part, it just throw the softmax function. So if, for example, we using the, uh, the simple, uh, the, the, the uh, inner product and so on, inner product doesn't have a parameter, right? So this kind of a fusion representation is a little bit weak. But by using this kind of parametric form, a fusion representation is more flexible because we have a parameter here, we have a parameter here, uh, and so on. So uh, this uh, the, the, uh, function form is uh, the quite often used as a RN transducer uh, as a scoring function. And this part is also called joint network. Joint means that the in, uh, information about the time frame, information about the token is uh, considered jointly. But this is for me uh, quite similar to the, the attention uh, the score uh, the based approaches, although there are several parameters and so on. And actually this part uh, has not been so much studied, I would say, some people actually are the proposing to use the other multiplicative uh, the one, and uh, some people are the actually uh, try to use the, uh, the, the, the uh, inner product and so on. And we may make this part to be more complicated uh, to make the kind of joint network to be rich. So this can be actually interesting uh, the research uh, directions, I feel. But uh, anyway, mostly uh, people are using this uh, the additive uh, the, uh, the joint network uh, the combination. Okay, so that's the kind of entire uh, the modeling. With that, now we can actually represent this uh, the, the function uh, as uh, the, uh, the uh, neural network, uh, the, the, uh, the functions. Then, uh, similar to the, uh, the CTC, let's think about the training. And this part, uh, if we try to kind of directly uh, working on the, uh, the RN transducer, we have to care about the summation over all possible alignment sequence, right? But fortunately, uh, RN transducer cases, we can also compute the forward and the backward probabilities. And the two, how to make a forward and the, or backward probabilities? We try to actually make a recursive uh, the, the equations, right? And in the RN transducer cases, we can also make a, a recursive uh, the equation very simple, okay, uh, very simply. So this is I just kind of uh, uh, that taking the one part of the uh, network, uh, like you know, uh, let's say this part. Let's think about I am kind of taking the this uh, part of the subnetwork here. 
And then we want to compute this one. And how to compute this one? First, you know, other if we have a, this kind of a function, which we can uh, obtain from the previous step, and then from here to here, we just add a, add a multiplied uh, by the uh, the uh, the uh, blank uh, probability, and then uh, this uh, the, the dot point is going to the horizontal right the, the direction. Okay, so this is one way to uh, the get the probability from this one, and similarly, uh, if we get the probability from this one, we can actually compute the uh, the uh, the probability of the vertical transition. In this case, this can be a, a particular uh, the prediction, uh, the, the uh, token, and then we actually get some kind of a transition probability. So this uh, the, the, uh, forward uh, computation is actually represented by uh, the two uh, the, the, uh, the arcs. One is the uh, horizontal transition, and the other is the vertical uh, transition. And then we can actually get the other uh, forward uh, the computation. And then since this is recursive, we can, you know, once we have uh, this kind of our uh, other probability, next one, you know, we using the other, uh, next we want to compute this one. We, for example, computing this one and this one in advance. And then we can comp compute it from here and from here, right? So we can actually also compute the uh, the whole other probabilities uh, based on the RN transducer computation. Uh, and then that the, we can compute the law, so we can actually also compute the some kind of inference score and then performing the, uh, the speech recognition in the RN transducer. But uh, uh, I didn't kind of dig up uh, the, the, uh, dig into the uh, the details in the RN transducer uh, because uh, it is very similar to the CTC. And actually a little bit simpler uh, due to uh, this kind of uh, the, the arc uh, because of the uh, the simple transition uh, comes from the, uh, the, the, uh, the RN transducer. Okay, so this is a kind of overall uh, the architecture of the RN transducer. And again, as I mentioned, uh, this is uh, based on the encoder part, which are providing the uh, information about the features for each time frame. And this part is, uh, the, I say, very similar to the RN, uh, the RN language model or a neural network language model. And then this will providing the hidden state of the uh, token, uh, the, the, the previous token and so on, okay? And then joint modeling is to combine these other uh, two variables and then getting the score and then providing the score uh, in this other uh, one particular uh, path uh, in ZK. So this is the other uh, RN, uh, transducer overview. And as you could see that there are a lot of similarity uh, that compared with attention-based or CTC-based approaches, right? So which I will spend some time and explain it in the other uh, couple of slides. Okay, so first, uh, the, let's uh, discuss about RN transducer versus CTC. The biggest difference uh, comes from the conditional independence assumption. By doing that, we can actually uh, the remove the uh, conditional independence assumption, and we can make uh, the RN transducer to be more precise. Uh, that, uh, uh, that is the kind of our most uh, the unique uh, the, the benefit of the RN transducer. However, uh, the model is actually in the RN transducer, it is a little bit kind of tricky, especially the, um, uh, the comp uh, computation of the 
uh, the training cost is actually larger than CTC. So that is probably the easily you guys can see that by checking this one. So please add a look at this one, which is corresponding to uh, the get the same token with the various uh, the trades and so on. So the question are uh, the which uh, the which one has the more other uh, the the uh, the nodes uh, that is related to the the, the RN transducer uh, and the CTC. We, let's check it. One, two, three, four, four times. One, two, three, four, five. Twenty, right? This one. Eleven. So the CTC is uh, the way uh, smaller uh, in terms of the node. And the number of arcs, oh, I'm, I didn't count it, but I'm very sure that CTC is less uh, than the, uh, the RN transistor. And this number of arcs and the number of uh, the, the nodes are actually almost uh, proportional to the number of computational cost. So due to that, actually the RN transistor's computational cost is generally higher than CTC. And the RN transistor is also uh, the, the similar to the, uh, the, uh, the attention-based encoder decoder. We often use the teacher forcing. So this is also another approximation. So RN transistor attention-based encoder decoder generally uh, that doesn't have uh, so much uh, the approximation, but they're still using the, uh, force, uh, the teacher forcing. That is actually quite large, the approximation. Okay, so another part is that CTC inference is actually uh, the faster than RN transducer in the most cases. Because RN transducer has an incremental computation part compared with uh, uh, the CTC, right? Which part uh, are the, the makes the kind of computation uh, the incremental? Actually, this uh, the decoder part, the token prediction part. This part is since we have to wait previous token, uh, and then other uh, the, the uh, predict predicting the next token. So it's more like a language model. So we actually cannot make this part to be parallelized. So CTC is actually faster, and the similar to the uh, attention based encoder decoder. I also want to mention that RN transducer is can use the language model, but this other uh, language model is uh, not uh, very uh, powerful, uh, since because the uh, token prediction part and the, this uh, language model part is quite overlapped. So it's actually uh, the doesn't uh, well uh, the combined uh, uh, the uh, language model scores. So RN transducer has a lot of issues uh, for other, uh, using the shadow uh, language model. And then, as I mentioned, uh, some people is try to kind of uh, subtract the original decoder language model inside the RN transducer to compensate this kind of mismatch and so on. So this is uh, the, the, about the, uh, the RN transducer versus CTC. But of course, there are a lot of approximation or kind of research to uh, the make the CTC, uh, RN transducer to be useful, uh, especially uh, the, when we try to kind of uh, the, use the, uh, this kind of trace structure. As I mentioned, this uh, trace structure is very redundant. Uh, and the sum of the kind of uh, passes will not have to be uh, the, the considered in speech recognition. For example, this pass first you know, goes to SEE predicted and then consuming the all frames. This one is not very realistic in speech equation, right? Without, without checking the speech features so much, uh, generating the token and so on is actually very uh, the unnatural. And the, well, basically, even, you know, uh, the, the 
、あだ、コンシューミングだ、あ、トークン、マルチプルタイムズ、is not very natural in other speech condition cases. And then there is a, a the one extension of the RN transducer, which is actually a, the, the eliminate the unnecessary passes like this. So in these cases, we just kind of allow、uh, the, the each kind of uh, the uh, passes to only get the other、uh, the one uh, the, the, uh, y、uh, the axis transition. A token transition. By doing that, we actually remove the many of the、uh, token、uh, the, the, uh, transition and then making this uh, the, uh, the RN transistor to be simpler. Actually, this is uh, the, the, uh, the, uh, the one of the most uh, the frequently used,、uh, uh, the, the used alternative of the RN transistor, which is kind of、uh, the restricting the, the emission of the token. Uh, per, uh, uh, the one time,、uh, that is quite kind of uh, uh, often used、uh, as an approximation.、Uh, often during training, but sometimes even、uh, during the beam search,、uh, this、uh, approximation、uh, is on, often used.、Uh, by the way,、uh, the, since the, the、uh, RN transducer is、uh, very flexible, so Do you guys remember that the CTC cannot be used for the TTS?、Uh, do you remember the reason why CTC cannot be used for the、uh, TTS? Yes, exactly. So input becomes shorter、uh, than the output, and then CTC cannot reach the end, right? In this case, do you have this constraint? Right, you are right. Actually, even you know, one frame or, <laughs> or is fine.、Uh, the, this, uh, the, the, uh, the possibly we can actually emit all the token and the,、uh, the, the reaching to the final uh, the, uh, the, the position. So, this is also very cool、uh, part of the RN transistor.、Uh, we still kind of are、uh, the assuming the monotonic behavior, monotonic assumption. But the constraint comes from the length is actually removed in RN transducer. So I actually don't know, but probably some people are using RN transducer for CTC. Do you guys know this work? Because theoretically possible. So I think it's very cool to do that. Yeah, I'm sure someone is doing it. But、uh, I just want to mention that again, you know, due to the kind of uh, the uh, Relaxation of the lengths、uh, the issues,、uh, the RN transducer、uh, can be used for the、uh, just kind of assumption, just a monotonic.、Uh, other than that,、uh, that, we can use many of the sequence to sequence tasks.、Uh, by the way,、uh, our group is also、uh, the recently proposed uh, uh, another new CTC, which is actually including the,、uh, the jump、uh, in the,、uh, the transition. In the other,、uh, the, uh, the, the、uh, horizontal axis, which actually reducing the computational cost and the, the making the kind of RN transducer at a very fast. So, this is also another solution that, that, that we can find. So, basically,、uh, not only CTC, in the CTC part, we also, I also mentioned, but、uh, not only CTC, in the RN transducer, uh, the, by uh, the, the, uh, the, the, the Considering the, the, some kind of our additional、uh, the, the transition and so on, we could possibly build a new RN transducer function.、Uh, this, this is what I want to also emphasize. So, this part is not fully fixed. Okay, next、uh, comparison is the RN transducer versus attention. I actually try to write the attention. Uh, the very similar to the,、uh, the RN transducer. And actually, this looks very similar, right?、Uh, where can you guys find some difference, by the way, from this figure and from this figure in the attention and the RN transducer? Correct. 
while attention requires everything, right? And then this part is cross attention to consider all the, the speech features, while uh, the RN transducer is more simple. And then only taking the feature here and then making the, some kind of alignment information and so on. So this is actually uh, one of the big difference of the RN transducer uh, the versus the attention and so on. Both are based on the explicit conditional independence assumptions. But uh, uh, by using this kind of uh, uh, the information, actually RN transducer has a nice property for online uh, streaming approaches. But the CTC can also do it. So this other function is similar to CTC, but just kind of, uh, I want to uh, emphasize it, the comparison with the RN transducer about the attention. Okay, what I am talking about online property. Online property here means that we don't want to get the future speech and then want to get the kind of result in the middle. Okay, because uh, if we uh, the want to get the future uh, the speech, means that we have to do everything after we finish the something, uh, after we uh, the finish to utter something, right? Uh, if the computer is very, very quick, it may be fine, but it can be very efficient. While I am speaking, speech recognition is starting to recognize the speech incrementally. And unfortunately, attention, it is not easy because again, we actually want to get this information and we actually get all this information. After that, we are uh, uh, using the attention to get, uh, generating the token sequence. So attention cannot actually, add, uh, we can make it <laughs> uh, by uh, using a lot of trick that are the uh, online trick and so on. But uh, the generally, it is not easy to make attention. However, in the RN transducer cases, very easy. We just kind of changing the encoder, not to checking the feature context. So we can just using you know other other unidirectional LSTM, or we can just using the causal, uh, the, the transformer, and so on. And then we can make this part uh, not to checking the future. Uh, context, right? And by doing that, RN transducer can easily uh, make the, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the speech condition to be working in the, uh, the streaming, uh, online streaming manner. So this is actually one of the big reasons that currently uh, many industries are working on the RN transducer uh, and the CTC and so on. Okay, so uh, this is the kind of uh, the, the uh, the end of the, uh, the uh, summary of today's uh, the lecture. So RN transducer due to the streaming property, uh, it is actually uh, the quite actively working in industry and the many products are actually from the, uh, the RN transducer uh, right now. And the reason is because it is online and the CTC is, by the way can also make it online but we can actually make the, uh, the, the RN transducer generally better than CTC uh, thanks to the uh, prediction network. However, I just want to uh, the, the, uh, make some uh, the, the, the discussions about it. So this is actually the, a kind of trend people are moving. Initially, uh, the many people started to work on CTC because it is simple. But uh, the later, due to the issue in the performance, uh, the CTC RN transducer attention, three of them are actually compared uh, in the, the next phase. And then at that time, actually attention was better in terms of the performance. Uh, the, it has a drawback in the online property, but due to the kind of a, a, a good performance and also having a lot of uh, the connections to the other areas like NLP, uh, the computer vision and so on. Attention was actually uh, quite actively studied. But later, uh, the many kind of uh, the instant industry started to work on the RN transducer uh, because of the online streaming uh, the capabilities. And I say that this is our current status. 
so that I try to put a lot of em emphasis on the RN transducer in this lecture. However, we are not sure next other uh, which one would be kind of uh, we are still not getting the best kind of uh, other solution of which one is better. Even HMM, maybe we can also include HMM. Uh, we are not sure which one is better because all the technique has a pros and cons. And actually, uh, the recently, many people started to think that, that we should move to the attention. Uh, because of the kind of a strong other uh, interface uh, with the large language models and so on. RN transducer could use the large language model from the second pass or prediction network, but this is actually this uh, the, 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 uh, the tight integration compared with attention-based encoder decoder, because remember that attention-based encoder decoder, half the rest of the decoder part is almost language model, right? So it can have a very good kind of integration, while the RN transducer is through the joint model. So joint model is actually not so many parameters you remember, right? So actually this part uh, eliminates the effect of the large language model, unfortunately. So due to that, actually many people now uh, uh, revisit uh, their attention and so on. And again, also CTC is still many people are working on it. So uh, this kind of a trend is changing, but in our lecture, I try to kind of explain all the kind of techniques so that you, know, uh, that you can use each of the techniques uh, for your application. Okay, that's it. Uh, any questions? Okay, if not, uh, we can finish it. Thank you.